Today, I'm gonna to show you how to make this simple motion graphics that really pops. Let's jump right in. Tip -tot. Hello everybody and welcome back to Tip Tut. Today, we're taking a look at some really simple, really quick motion graphic techniques that really help your graphics to pop. Now, mainly these techniques are these quick changes in color and this really snappy motion graphics line graph curve, motion curve. Um, so we're gonna jump right into this uh, and hopefully it'll be a nice quick little tutorial that you guys will enjoy. So as you can see here, we've got this sort of looping ping pong shape where um, this ball goes through a door, turns into an eye, the eye goes inside of itself and then it loops over and over again. So it's some really simple stuff here. The motion graphics isn't really the important thing. It's mainly these like quick snap in color and this particular line curve that we're going to look at today. So inside of here I've got the loose shapes themselves. I'm just going to turn off this adjustment layer because it uh, makes the computer freak out a little bit whilst I'm recording. Um, so you can see here that we've got some split layers that pop in color and some shapes that twist around. Uh, and really what I like about this is how like poppy, how energetic it feels and that's what we're going to try and recreate today. So let's jump right in. We've got a couple of different solids here, some of them 3D, some of them 2D. We've got some corner pin action going on, I believe, uh, on this dark cyan shape here. Yep, which then repositions this shape into the desired eye shape. Then the ball drops inside and it changes colors. So we're gonna recreate this. Let's create a new composition. I'm just gonna make it 1920 by 1080 and 30 frames per second is fine, like so. Okay, let's drop in a new solid with a layer new solid. And I'm gonna call this background. At the moment, it's in the wrong color. So if we go to solid settings again, we can change that. And over here, I've got my color palette for this um, particular tutorial. You can choose whatever colors you want, but I'm gonna choose this nice black background 071E22. There we go, We're looking good. On top of that, I'm gonna create a little rectangle uh, now, I'm going to try and follow what I've done previously a little bit, but I'm not going to worry too much if the colors change. Um, so let's draw ourselves a nice re red rectangle, rather. And I'm just going to use um, uh, snapping on to pop that into the middle of our composition. So that's snapping just up there. That creates these little snapping points that will help you whoop, put it perfectly in the middle. Let's change the fill of that color to our red, which is Echo Echo 2. Echo 3-1, like so, perfecto. And then we're gonna to toggle our switches to make that layer 3D. And in addition to that, we're gonna go and grab a circle. Now this circle is gonna be our beige color, so we'll just draw a nice and neat circle there, holding shift to make sure it's perfect. Again, pop him in the middle, like so. And we'll make this one the beige color, which is Foxtrot 4, Charlie 9 five perfect okay that'll do for now that's all the shapes that we need believe it or not so we're going to take this shape and we're going to rename it circle uh, sorry uh, rectangle we're going to rename this one circle and our 3d rectangle shape we're going to hit r and let's rotate it in space so that we can get this effect now when you are directly in the middle where you're probably going to want is a rotation value of negative 90, which makes your rectangle disappear. Okay. So we're going to keyframe that. Boom. We're also going to keyframe the position with P. Boom. And then we're going to hit U to bring up everything that we've just keyframed. Okay. This is just so that we can fake this kind of 3D growing stretching effect here. Now we don't want it to start like this. We want it to start a little bit up the page a little bit rotated one way, like so. And if we look at our previous composition, Comp2, you can see that it almost, almost disappears. But because of the frame rate, there's still that little sliver of the rectangle there before it changes color. So we're gonna pop this to the top of the page using our position values. And we'll pop this ball, again, we'll give it a position value. We'll also give it a scale value. And I'll show you why in a minute, because that's another technique that really helps this pop, this squash and stretch is an old animation technique. So we'll hit U on those as well. And we'll just position him at the bottom of the page there. Now, all of these changes in color, we do at the last stage, okay? 
makes it really, really easy for us if we all keep it at the same color at the start. So what we'll do is we'll just animate the entire thing and then we'll go back and we'll change all the colors. So talking about animation, let's do it. I'm gonna hit Control, Shift and Right three times. Each time I do that, it moves along 10 frames. Now, because I'm on a 30 frames per second document, that means it's a one second transition. We're gonna keyframe all of these things again, okay? Uh, but then we're gonna go back to the middle. Control, Shift, Left once, and then Control, Left five times. 15 frames directly in the middle. What we're gonna do then is keyframe just the scale, okay? Oh, I was gonna keyframe everything but we can delete the ones we don't need. So the position of the rectangle, we definitely won't need. And we probably won't need the X rotation either. We won't need the position of the circle. We just need the scale of it. So the reason that I actually did that is because I had all of these layers selected still. In the middle of this um, uh, animation here, we're going to want to stretch just one um, proportion of our circle. So we're going to unconstrain them and we're going to find the one which is height, which I think is the second one. Good. We're going to stretch that to about 130. Now, when something moves fast in animation, to give it that emphasis of moving fast, there's a technique called squash and stretch. Now, you need to make sure that the mass of your shape stays the same when you're squashing or stretching it. So if I've stretched this this way without making it thinner, the mass of this object has increased, which is obviously wrong. So what we're going to do is just make this guy slightly thinner, like so. Okay. Now we're going to take our scale of the first one like this, scale of the second one like this, scale of the third one back to normal. Let's go back to our first position keyframe and navigate to the second one. And then we're just going to move and basically swap positions of our rectangle and our circle. It doesn't have to be perfect. You just have to eyeball it. We're also going to rotate our rectangle. It's at negative 117 at the moment. So if we push it the other way, about the same amount. We should get a cool looking thing. Now that's pushed a bit far to me, so I might shift both of these back up, just so it's a bit more in the middle. Okay, now let's look at what we got. Doesn't look very poppy, does it? That straight linear animation doesn't look great. So what we're gonna do is, uh, for now, we're actually gonna delete this scale keyframe. That was just to illustrate the point. And we're gonna grab all of our layers. We're gonna hit our Easy Ease Graph Editor or just the graph editor, rather. Um, but before we do that, we're going to select all the keyframes and hit F9. That's why I had easy ease on the brain. Uh, hitting F9 will create your normal linear keyframes into easy eased keyframes. Then when we go to the graph editor, we can see the speed graph of how our objects are going to move. They're going to start off slow with a nice low value. They're going to quicken up and then they're going to slow down again. So if we watch this, it looks a little bit better. Still not great, but a little bit better. If you don't see this graph, if you see uh, this graph, then you're just looking at the values. So the values have changed on this graph. You want to make sure you click this little second button down here and go edit speed graph, which will show you these loops. Let's zoom in. And this is how we're gonna get this snappy motion, okay? We've got this sort of smooth motion at the moment, but what we want it to do is sort of snap into position, really struggle, and then all of a sudden, bam, it's released. And that's how you get that pop. So we're gonna grab both of these points of the graph here, which is gonna bring up these little yellow handles. And we're just going to drag these into the middle, both speed and influence. And you can see that our graph gets really, really squished. Okay. Now, if you drag them all exactly to the middle, you're going to have a speed of zero pixels a second and an influence of 100. And what that's going to do is it's going to make it look really crazy. Watch this. Look at that. See how much better that is? It's really struggling. But we don't get is that sense of realism, that sense of like oomph. You still got that motion, bam, really nice. But with this little scale trick on the uh, circle, it's gonna look even better. So just as this thing's stretching to go, we're gonna find the point where it really starts to speed up. About there. And if you zoom in, you can see the dots of where each frame is moving. So you can see they're all clumped together here and then they're moving faster. So as you move along, you can see where it starts to speed up, which is about here, that's where the increments between these dots get bigger. So we're gonna hit scale and we're gonna move over a few keyframes until it's really moving fast, probably to where it's just about past here. Then we're gonna keyframe again, go back to our first keyframe and we're just gonna start stretching this. So we might go to like 110, like so, maybe make this 95. And as you can see at the moment, it's like 
is really trying and then bam between there and there is where the huge jumps are yeah look at that maybe we'll push that over just one more here we're going to go to about 130 this is going to go to about 95 and then it's going to start vroom, slowing down okay but you can see here that as they bunch up again that's going to look weird if we leave it without another keyframe to stop it bunching or make it bunch quicker okay you can see that that looks really good at the start yeah looks really poppy but then on this bit it kind of just back into itself so what we need to do is about roughly the same amount um before as you've got after drop another keyframe pop this guy back to 100 100 and then maybe if you wanted to you could push him to sort of 105 and 90 97 something like that and then he'll just really gently settle back in but you can see that right in the middle there is where most of the animation that's stretching and squashing takes place. Look at that. Really nice. Really poppy. Awesome. That is step one. Step two then is bringing this rectangle, I believe, into position under the eye. Yes. There we go. So to do that, really simple. Nice uniform scale um, and a uh, corner pin on our rectangle. So we'll have it rest, I think, for a, a short beat. And then here, after, say, 10 frames, control shift right, we'll keyframe everything again. We're definitely going to need scale and position on the circle. OK, then now moving on to the rectangle. I did this with corner pin last time, but I think a better way to do it is with the normal traditional values. Uh, we're going to do position, X rotation, and we're also going to shift and shift S and hit scale as well. So let's keyframe all of those. Uh, and we'll start off with just normal keyframes, which you can get by hitting control click, which turns them back to linear. OK, now <clears throat> from here, we're just going to give ourselves a little bit of space and we're going to move over another second. One, two, three. Let's keyframe all of these again. Boom. Now let's start with the circle because that's nice and easy. We're just going to drop that scale uniformly down to about 60, 60. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Uh, that one's nice and easy. We'll get to animating the um, linear graph of that in a second. Let's work on this rectangle for now. So what we want it to end up in is with a rotation back to zero, which gives us what is essentially a 2D shape. We can then just squash and stretch this scale like so. You can see why this is easier than doing the corner pin. And we're going to position him just upwards a little bit. Now, to make sure that I'm getting the right size and width, which is important, <clears throat> I'm just going to overlay it on this circle for now until I can see that those edges line up perfectly. Once I know they do, I can position that underneath it to get the eye. And then using uh, just my eyes, I'm going to position both of these, making sure I'm directly above these keyframes so I don't accidentally create any more. I'm going to visually center them, like so. So now that's in the middle. Nice and easy. Grab all those keyframes, hit F9, go to your graph editor, and you can see the difference. Okay, you can see the difference here between our first animation with that little bounce on the scale, that's what that little lump is there, and this really, really uh, intense um, uh, value. <laughs> I could not think of the word value there. <clears throat> Compared to this uh, really quite boring one. Doesn't look good. Remember this. Now grab these. Squish their influence all the way up. Boom. Now look at it. Yeah. Looks really nice. So there's some overshoot there. Which you may or may not want. Um, you're going to get that sometimes. Let's see if we can fix it. Let's undo that value. Uh, make sure we're happy with the end result. And let's just do the circle first. See what we can come up with. So if we push all these in, speed influence zero, speed influence zero, do the same thing here. And uh, now this I think is happening because I'm accidentally dragging these up a little bit. Yeah, 
There we go. So what was happening there was I was accidentally dragging these values slightly off of this baseline, okay, which then messes with your linear graph. This is why you want to make sure that you're only dragging like that. That was happening, but just a tiny, tiny bit, which was increasing the speed of the over position, which you don't want to do. You just want to influence the speed of the keyframes you've created. And there you go, Oomph. scaled down. So sometimes it's best to work with a few keyframes at a time so you don't accidentally make mistakes. Let's F9 all of those, grab them all over here. Holding shift should help. Make sure that we don't come off. Pop. And then that one should whoop, straight into position. Looking pretty good. Let's watch that in real time. Really snappy. We love it. Boom. Okay, great. So the next section, <clears throat> again, really simple. We're going to move over 10 frames, control shift right. All we need now is just position on both of these. So position, oops, excuse me, uh, just the position and just the position. Go over 30 frames again, control shift right, right, right. Keyframe both of these. And we're just going to move them inside of themselves. So we're going to slide this down to the middle of this shape. Roughly there. Then we're going to grab both of these holding shift and we're going to move them back to roughly the middle of our composition. You know the drill by now, we're going to grab these keyframes. Here, because we have started with non-linear, easy eased keyframes, it's already done some of the work for us. Sometimes that can mess with you though. So you just want to make sure that that speed and influence is again back up. Perfect. Now, here comes the fun bit. Let's hit N to cap this here and then right click that gray bar and choose trim comp to work area. Let's zoom out and look at everything we've got so far. Boom, boom, boom. Now, I don't like these gaps anymore, so I'm gonna get rid of them. I'm just gonna drag all my keyframes over the ending points of these keyframes here. See if that's affected anything adversely. It has. So what we'll do is we'll just leave a one frame pause. If we zoom all the way in, you can see there's just one frame gap there. That should mean it's not going to affect anything. Nice. But it will stop that little pause and it will keep that poppiness to it. Okay, so let's go to the end of the keyframes here. Hit N again, trim composition to work area and have a look. Really snappy. Really cool. Right, let's get to the fun bit. Let's select all of those and hit U a couple of times so that it makes sure we bring up uh, just the keyframes that we've edited, okay? That um, just means that there's no extra values open and it's nice and thin and easy to work with. Let's turn all of these to red and find the point about there. Between this frame and this frame is where those shapes start to overlap. What we'll do then find the perfect frame we want. I think it's going to be that one for the switch. Let's press U to collapse them. Control, Shift and D will split those layers. Still holding Control and pressing right square bracket will push them to the top. Now here comes the fun bit. We can start playing with our colors. I'm going to take my background uh, and I'm going to turn it to the same colors that are in composition too. So the background becomes light, the rectangle becomes dark, the circle becomes red. Okay, this is really easy. The background becomes light, so you just go to solid settings and you choose the beige color. The rectangle becomes black, so you go to your settings and you type in the black code, which is 071 echo 22. The ball becomes red, which again, the code is E echo echo 2 echo 31. Now, look how much this pops. Bam, isn't that great? So let's see what we did on the other composition here. So it changes at this point, it shrinks, changes at this point, and then goes back again to that nice green. So changing color stays and whilst it's there, you can change it there if you want to, I'm not going to. And then I'm gonna do it as soon as this guy is about there, we're gonna change colors again. Select these three layers, Control Shift D, Control right close bracket to push them on top. Then we'll change some colors. This time we're gonna add a new color into the mix. Solid settings, we're gonna go and add in this green, which is one delta seven, eight, seven, four. And then really this is up to you, whatever colors you want, but I'm gonna make this guy the beige. So that's gonna be F4C095. Now you can leave the ball the same color. I'm gonna change it to add that extra bit of pop. 
whether or not it goes to the black or the green though. Let's do it to the black. 071, Echo 22. That looks pretty good. Bam. So let's look at what we've got. One, two, three. Really snappy motion graphics. Now, last few things then that I did in the um, uh, original is that I pre-comped this entire composition. Okay, so I went to select all the layers and hit pre-compose. And I called this uh, comp inner. And that gives us a composition the exact length, everything locked away. What we can do then is go to composition settings and we can double this time. So we'll make it six seconds and six frames. We then can add an adjustment layer to make that nice bit of grain. So we can go to layer, new adjustment layer. Then we can just go up here and hit noise. Drag that noise over. Boop. Put it up to about 10%. That looks pretty good. Just adds that little bit of texture in there as well. We don't use color noise though, because that's gonna look crappy. So you can turn off color noise and it makes it black and white. If you really wanna push it, you can hit it up to like 20. That might be a bit crazy though. Let's leave it at 10. That's the nice adjustment layer for the bit of noise there. Now what we want to do is right click on our comp inner, go to time, enable time remapping. Now what we need to do is just drag this layer out so it fills the composition and then twirl down this time remap with the frame selected, we can just alt click, so that's hold alt and click the stopwatch. In here, we're gonna type a little bit of code, which I'm just gonna remind myself of. Inside of comp two, look, you can see there's this bit of code here, loop out ping pong. Now loop out basically loops your composition, but what ping pong does, I'll show you. Loop out, semicolon to close the code, single uh, quotes, ping, Pong. What ping pong does is it will go to the end of your keyframes and when it hits, it will reverse it backwards again. So that means you get this nice looping section like so. It will carry on forever and ever. And that is simple popping motion graphics. I know it's a bit of a long one, but I wanted to explain every bit of my thought process because people have said in the past that I've skipped some things. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this where I went a little bit deeper into something a little bit simpler. Uh, if you did enjoy it, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, ring the bell, all that jazz. And I will see you next time on another episode of Tip Top. Remember to subscribe for more tips, tricks, and tutorials. Thanks for watching.